the essence of Nidra projects itself in a way of Torah and mitzvahs, which is pretty much the same thing like we said yesterday. Um, therefore, the Orient Sof sort of realizes in itself that all it is is an expression of the essence. And therefore, it has sort of a hamshacha from the essence when it realizes that it's coming from the essence and it finds that out by realizing that it's just an example of what's going on inside of a Yid, inside of the Torah. That's what we said yesterday, right? Remember that? All right. So, let's see if we can pull this thing together here. Al Pizeh, going into Os Ches. Al Pizeh Yesh Lavar Zeh. Accordingly, we can explain this. She Ha'isurus de la'ila. Hanim Sheches Ma'atzma. Bichdei la'or Ha'isurus de la'sata. That the arousal from above, which is drawn out on its own, in order to arouse an arousal from below. Did you get that? That Hashem basically does something from above in order to make us have an arousal from below. It's, it's from a place that the arousal from below cannot reach there. Right? And that's the whole point. That, as we said before, that there's only so much you can do as a created being. You can't reach to certain places. So this arousal that comes from above, it, it comes from a place that an arousal from below cannot reach to there. And similarly, this itself needs explanation. Why is it that our arousal from below cannot reach up to such a place? Who? Some spontaneous laughter there in the back of the shul. It's always a good thing, spontaneous laughter. I love it. Yeah. Who? Kilagabi Dargazu Hatata Eino Tovis Makum. Right? So why is it that the that our arousal from below cannot reach up to there? It's because the arousal from below, Lagabi Dargazu, in, in comparison to that higher place that it we, we needs to, to wake us up from the arousal from above up, the arousal from above our arousal from below ain't no tofes makum it does not even hold a place there right this is what we were saying that we're talking basically about the Indian of the the sort of uh etzim hagiloi right the concept that there's a place called the orient so which doesn't even recognize our existence right and and we need specific it, it, you know, it's beyond the worlds completely and we need that in order to empower us to get out of the worlds, right? We can't, we can't go and uh, sort of access this supernatural level unless we have a, 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 a feeder from there because we can't reach it on our own. But that itself creates like a little conflict because how does it wind up coming down in the first place if it doesn't, if it's, if it's whole concept of what it is is that it's a place that doesn't recognize our existence. We don't even toface makum by it. It doesn't recognize that there's a place for worlds at all. It's, com- it's completely oblivious to us, basically. Wow. So how does it ever wind up coming to arouse us if its yeah, definition it's is that we can't reach it because it's completely beyond our comprehension, or beyond our whole state status of reality? That's a good question, I would Very say. Question, yeah. Right? What's it doing with us? And the whole point is not something that we did, right, in order to get it here, because that's the whole point. There's nothing we can do to even reach it. V'yesh <laughs> lehosif, he says to, to add to Zesha in Tfisus Makum La Nivroim La Gabi Dargazu. This that there's no, I never never have up to this day found the best a good translation for Tfisus Makum. But is it like to catch a place or seize a place or to? Those aren't really helping me either. No, no. But uh, this that there's no there's no place for Nivroim, right? Compared to this level, right? That we don't we don't hold place by them. Who ki ashoresh de sovev? Why is it? It's because the root of sovev. You okay? The root of sovev. Shrimenu nimsheches isudus de la'el lazu. From which, right, this arousal from above is drawn. This root of sovev. Who are orshin yano who lo lahair esa olmos elagilu etzim. So this is kind of what we just said. Why is it that we don't hold place by this realm? 
It's because this is a light whose whole Indian is not to shine into the world, but rather to reveal the essence, as we've been describing over and over again, right. this sort of dual nature of the light. One of it has nothing to do with us, just shining the essence, whereas, the, whereas it has an aspect of shining towards something. But this whole level of sovev is that it's not shining towards something, it's shining in and of itself, and therefore that's one of the reasons why we don't hold up any place in by it. It doesn't recognize our existence. Wait, you said purpose of the light to show the essence? Or it's the it's Inyano. the glow or something of the I mean it's like the sun I don't know, I mean it seems like it shines because it's like a, a it's an event that happens after the it, it's not the reason for this this the light, is it? The cause. Wait, what is not the reason for the light? No, I mean I'm I'm Take your time, it's good, you're onto something there. I think what I heard you say is that it's the re- the essence, I mean, it's supposed to shine. The goal is to shine the light, to show the, this. And, okay, but to who? I, to I, who? Not to us. It doesn't matter to who, but, but to me, I thought it was, it shines because the moon's in front of it. You know, I mean, it, it just, it's shining, it doesn't have a, a purpose to shine. It's just that this light that was released or that comes off of this thing shines. Right. But it, but its purpose, I didn't realize that the purpose of the light right. was to show us whatever it, to show. It just it was like a an event that happened since it does shine. Right. It's light. Right. So that's you're 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 sort of dancing on both sides of the of the point. We made we made an assertion. And then we sort of undid it. And so let's, let's do it again real quick, right? First of all, there's two types of light that comes out of the essence, right? One is a light that is not intended to shine towards anybody. It's right. just because, because Hashem can be in a state of revelation, so then He is. In other words, or He can be. And when He's in a state of revelation, it means that His infinite essence can, doesn't have to be in a state where it's not showing itself. It can show itself. It's not necessarily showing itself to anybody. It's just showing itself. Right, okay. and the and then there's a there's a light that he has inside of there that's ten hidden spheros whose whole purpose is to show itself to somebody else. Okay. Now that being said, it looks like the first light is is un, incapable of being experienced by the worlds because it's a light which precedes the kavana of shining to the worlds. It's not there to shine to anybody. It's just there to shine. It was shining before the worlds. Right? Shine on. We got him going again. But this time it's not spontaneous laughter. It's well-crafted laughter. Yeah. So, now, you with me there? So that, that's what we're saying. That this sovev, that's like the source of sovev and mamali, these two lights. Okay. So, which means sovev is, means it surrounds the world. It means it's beyond the comprehension of the world. Right? And it's intended to be like that. In other words, it's intended to never be making sense to the world. If you want light to come into the framework of the world. He has to create, he had to form like a unique light within that whose whole job was to be able to be eventually perceived by the world that he'll make it seem to. But, we also wound up saying that unlike the sun, Hashem is not forced to shine. It's not like because there's a, it's, it's, a, it's a luminary, illumination has to come out of it. Everything is willful by Hashem. He could stay in a state where he's just essence and he doesn't ever shine. So it's not automatic that he must reveal himself, even to himself. Like that first level of light. He doesn't have to bring that out in the first place. So even though the, the bringing of that light out in the first place has nothing to do with us, ultimately, since he brought it out willfully, it really, it has everything to do with us. Because everything exists for the sake of, ultimately, the Torah and the Jewish people. Since he didn't have to bring that light out, what caused him to bring it out? For himself, he needs to shine. I know the shining to yourself is no big chiddush. You already know what you have, right? So ultimately, even a light which is beyond the ability to, to be perceived was brought out in order for eventually it to have some, something to do with the world that's going to eventually come after it. And we said what that was. We said it was, who remembers? From yesterday, why did Hashem need to bring out an infinite light? when it's basically irrelevant to the creation? We said it was the purpose of Bittu. Yes. Purpose of what? Bittu. 
that ultimately since the world was generated, the ten spheres of Genesis, which was the worldly light, was ultimately generated from an infinite light, it means it's already inside of them at some point, total nullity. So that's, that we said, it, it actually does have a purpose for the world. But we're shooting for the other stream right now. We're saying like basically this light has nothing to do with us. And we're, we're now launching a new question. If it has mamish nothing to do with us, right, and it doesn't even recognize our existence, how is it suddenly summoned to come and arouse us down here and be an arousal from abo- above so that we can now have an arousal from below, like it like tickles us and makes us come towards it, when in general, it doesn't even recognize our existence. Right? How is it all of a sudden turning towards us and giving us its, this, this pick-me-up? That's the question we have in our hands right now. I'm not sure if I just confused you more or less. There no, I think I, before that last section, right. I, got, I think I got the answer. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. All right. So that being said, we're in this question um, that we're talking about this so babe light, which again is an arousal from below, and this light is primarily not a light that's made to shine, right? It's just giloy ha'etzam, how does it get here? The eich, after the brackets, eich nimshach misham isarusa de la'ela. How is it all of a sudden coming out from there, an arousal from above, bichdei la'ora isarusa de la'ela, in order to arouse us? In order, the same question, why is, it, why is it interested in us in the first place? How does it get interested, technically, mechanically, how does it get interested in us when it doesn't even, it's not even aware of our existence? Alpi and now Yesh Lomar, and according to everything we said in the previous chapter, we can now answer it. The Al Yedei Zesha Or, Shu Gilu Yetsim, who Dugmas in Yin Zesha be Yisrael, that because ultimately this light, the whole Orain Sof, whether you're talking about the the Gilu Yetsim or the Esrus Firs Agenuzos, that whole realm which is before the Tzimtzum, the whole Inyan of it. Is an ex- really its whole purpose of being is because it's, it's an example of what takes place inside of Am Yisrael and inside of the Torah, as we said yesterday. That it wouldn't even be there had it not been that it's some kind of reflection of what Yisrael and Torah are. Al yidei zed nirgash shakavanabo he bishvil Yisrael, and this is like a, an interesting word to put on the Orain Sof, but I like it. He says through this it feels, it's felt. That the intention of it is for the Jewish people. In other words, again, like I was saying, like we, we tend to think of it as light. And, and when we, we, we think of light, it's, like, it's not a conscious being. But this is like a super conscious being beyond, beyond any conscious that we can possibly imagine, this Orain Sof. I mean, this is basically God. Is it, is it just light or is it light, good, revelation? What is it? It's, it's oh, not light. We, when we say light, we obviously, the only thing we can imagine is physical light, right? There's no other light that we can really uh, wrap our heads around at this particular junction of our existence. But physical light is a metaphor for this divine Energy. thing. Conscious. Okay, uh, again, we, so we you can throw a, in... We don't even have a name for it. Right. Well, the Kabbalists okay. called it light. Okay. So therefore, it's obviously the best name. That's why I'm not going for energy or consciousness per se, just because light is the best name. That's what they used. It's called so cool. You could call it Sovev. Okay, it has what? It encompasses all of these things, clearly? Yeah, it encompasses basically literally everything because it's the source of all things, right? But it's so much, it's beyond even the source of all things. Only the ten spheres Haganuzos are called the source of all things. This is something which is, the, which the only way you can understand what it is, is it's beyond the source of all things. But the point is, what I'm trying to say is that it has feelings, okay? Somehow, there's a certain nirgash, that's the word to use here. There's, certain, there's a certain chap that it has that, that the, the question is simply answered like this. How is it in the world, does it recognize our existence to, to uh, come and arouse us when, it's, when it, by definition, doesn't recognize our existence? Because it realizes at a certain point that the whole purpose for its existence is to be made in the image of a Jew. The Orain Sof and the, and, the, and the Torah. That why is the Orain Sof infinite and also contain these Esther's Fierce like Agenuzos tucked away inside of it? Like it sort of looks itself and it says, how did I get here? And he's like, whoa, you know how I got here? Because Hashem wanted to create a Yid who is basically a piece of his very essence. And the Yid needs to, is going to express himself in two ways, a way which is sort of beyond investiture, which is the Ratzon of a Yid, or the Sovi of a Yid, and a way which is about investiture, which is the Mamali of a Yid. So it, it must be that I got here 
Because it meant, again, Hashem's bringing out these lights is voluntary, willful. He didn't have to bring out these lights. So they asked themselves, why did I get here? Why, what was the will of Hashem to bring me out in the first place? It was because I am of an example of what exists in a Yid. It comes to this realization that the whole purpose of the Orin Sov and the Esr Shvirza Genuzos is basically got there in the first place and came out of its essential cocoon because it's there to be an example of these two things in a Yid. So even though the aspect of it, which is so vague, is completely beyond the worlds, it nevertheless has a Shaykhis to Yidin and it realizes that because it's reason for being is because it serves as an example of the sovev inside of a yid. And it comes to this realization and therefore it, it does have suddenly a shaykh as to the yid. In other words, not so much that it recognizes the existence of the world necessarily, but it recognizes that there's an aspect inside of a yid, the ratzon, who is beyond world, beyond investiture, and it all of a sudden has an implicit shaykh. It's really a revelation of that. It realizes it's not just a revelation of atzmus, it's also a, it's a revelation of the Atmos, which is the Yid is an Atmos. So it realizes its, it, its purpose is all about this thing that it's emanating from, which is the Yid. How did it help when you realize that? The, uh, it comes and gives us an arousal from above. In other words, it lends itself to us to enable us to get out of our creation limitations. It comes down and basically presents itself to us. It's an arousal from above. Something which is beyond the worlds enters into our our hands, basically, in order to launch us out of the worlds. And the whole question was, how did it get there in the first place? Now we have the answer. Are we going to get into what the arousal is or how that works? We already did. It's basically the Indian of Maya, which is in, in, intended to bring out the Ma. Wow. Right? The, this is what this is. What it is. It's, 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 it's mitzvahs. Yeah. It's Torah. We already said what the Maya was. The, the Maya is Torah mitzvahs. Right? Because those are the objects that come from beyond creation that are put into our hands in order to enable us to leave the creation. Wow. So the question really that we're asking here is like, how was there such a thing as Matan Torah? Kind of. Right? How is it that the, something which is completely beyond creation got itself involved over here? Right? And it's because it realized that the Yid basically is the essence and all those things are really just there for us. Yeah. It realized that its intention in it, for it to be there in the first place, is for the Jewish people. And therefore, it, it's all of a sudden, it happily will come down and engage with us in order to arouse us to sort of access our true essence, right? It's there for us to bring our essence out. Just like it's there, so to speak, to bring Hashem's essence out, right? What's it there for? It's there to reveal Hashem's essence, ostensibly, right? It's, it reveals His infinite, it reveals His finite. But really, where's the essence, right? Where, is, is it coming from above to below, like Hashem wants to show His essence? That's not what happened. Hashem placed His essence inside of a Yid, and therefore, it's there to reveal the essence from below to above. The essence in found in a Yid, it came out to... to Enable us to show that we have the essence down here. Mm. You get that? I like it. Go it's on. Same, it's the same essence, right? <laughs> it's the same essence, only one essence. Right. And therefore, it, it will happily draw down an arousal from above to bring out this arousal from below because it, that's the whole point of it is to sh- allow the essence to shine, which is basically an arousal from below because we're, we're holding on to that essence. It's the ma inside of a yid. Okay, it's hidden when it comes to a Jew inside of a body. You don't see the essence of God, unfortunately, when you see a yid inside of a body. But it's in there. So it, it's the purpose of these lights is to reveal the essence. That's what their job is. The So they come down to do their job. This, this gets into another idea that I saw in Ayin Base. I don't know if it was in these chapters he's discussing or somewhere else, but it's, it's, it's connected. And it basically says, like, when it comes to light, light is implicitly trying to join its source, right? The whole idea of light is that it's like, it's not like, like, there's two, there's two things. There's sort of like, hey, I'm right. This is like revealing the essence over here. We got a good man in town. 
Here, join us, join us, Reb Shlomo. Great to see you. So, we've got this Indian of... There's basically two types of things, right? There's light and shefa, or light and kaili, we could also call it, right? And we've discussed this in this mimer already, that they, they're both like presentations of Hashem's essence, but they come out in different ways. One, light comes out in a way where it's always davuk to its source. It's always clean to its source. It's always like once, it's like running back to its source at every second. All it is doing is, try, is at every moment showing you that there's a source, right? Because if, you, if, if it gets like sort of cut off from the source, it can't live. So its whole purpose of light is, it's like an arrow pointing to the essence, saying there's an essence, there's an essence, there's an essence. I am the revelation of it. Whereas you have this other aspect of the, the kalim that come out of the essence, and they're also a revelation of Hashem, but they're not devuk in a, in a recognizable way to the essence. They look separate. They look like created beings. A, an, an object, for example, is not like light, where it's like pointing every second, I came from there, I came from there, I came from there. On the, on the opposite. Light things look like they just got there by themselves and they exist independently, right? So there's two types of revelations that come out of Hashem. One it looks disconnected and one looks connected. And its whole purpose is to connect. So the question that's asked over there is, what's in it for the light to come all the way down to this world. In other words, why is it going so far away from where it wants to be? The normal nature of light would be to basically not be. It wants to be inside of its essence. It wants to cling to its essence. It's going up, in other words. The purpose of light is that it wants to, it realizes there's a God and wants to join it. So how does it actually even come out in the first place? Right? It's sort of like, it's like against the nature of light to go down, is what he's basically saying there. Because if you think about what light is all about, is that it recognizes its creator and is clinging to it continuously to join to it, right? We don't think of light like that because the whole idea of light is that it's like rushing out somewhere. But the truth, if you think about the fact that it's clinging to its, its source at every minute and its, its whole existence is based on its source and it knows that, why does it want to leave its source? It wants to be in its source. It wants to be nullified to its source. So the answer that he gives there is because, and this is, what we're dealing with over here is that it realizes that the source is way down there inside of a yid and that's where it's going for it. It's, it's actually running to cling to its source which is inside of the essence of a Jew. And not only that, but that's how it actually winds up having an existence. In other words, it's the reason that it's light which is shining as opposed to light which is not shining is because it is coming out of, its es out of the essence up there in order to run down and bring light to the essence down there. Because it's, it's trying to reveal that over there is the essence. Well, otherwise, what's, wa what's making it run over there? It's trying to cling to its essence, in fact. But it's trying to cling to the essence that's inside of the Yid. And so therefore, it literally realizes that that is the source of its life. There would be no shiny light if it wasn't that it was racing somewhere to go and bring revelation to the essence which is found over there. Otherwise, it would stay inside of its essence and just be in, in a state of nullity. It, what makes it come out? Right? So in fact, what makes it come out is not so much that Hashem says, go out, because that's like against its nature. It's going out to run towards the essence, because that's what light does. It wants to cling to its source. We're talking about the light of the ten spirit now? We're talking about all the light, all really. The light. Yeah, because the essence, which is inside of a Yid, as we've been saying, it, it ha it, since it's essence-like, it ha or its essence itself, it has two ways of expressing itself, infinitely and finitely. Right? So therefore, the light also has these two properties. Infinite, which is like the rot zone of a yid, and finite, which is like the ten kochos of a yid. So this light coming out, it's, it's directional only? It's not like isotropic? It's just no, it's everything. <coughs> but when you look at like the sun, or any like, you know, light, it's going <coughs> it needs to surface anywhere it can. No, it's also going everywhere it can, but the point is that, again, that's like the rot zone. A light which goes everywhere and is not interested in, 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 in being finer or going into a kli. That's like the rut zone, if you recall from a couple of days ago, inside of a yid. We have an aspect of our, of our soul which does not find a home in any particular limb. It's everywhere all at the same time. So that infinite part of the light is rut zone like. It's like a circuit. It's like a what? It's like a circuit. It's like we're like, you know, they say like a uh, uh, Jew is, is, is like the moon, right? Okay. Right. The light comes to us, hits us. You know, right. And it's, right. Uh, it's, it's right. It's, it, okay. It yeah. It's come down to us because we never think of that. Complicated. It's basically what we're saying here, though, is that it's coming down to us 
because it's trying to reveal what we are. We are like the essence of Hashem, which has infinite and finite properties. Yeah. And so it wants to... Okay, yeah. I asked because I was just wondering about this excess life that's not making it to us. If it's what, there isn't such a thing. There, so it is just... All things, us, all right? things, basically. It's just a revelation of what's going on inside of you. It's hard to understand. It's hard to believe that. And it's hard to understand that. But that's what we're saying right now: is that there, the, the inside of a Yiddish and a Shama, basically, what is a Yiddish and a Shama? What is this Indian of Ma? It's Pasha, the essence of Hashem. Just like for everything stems from the essence of Hashem, everything stems from this essence of the, that is inside of you. That's why, like, says a tzaddik can sort of who is all about like knowing this and being this. He could just sort of sit there and affect the entire world simultaneously. You know, what is a tzaddik after all? What, it's, it's basically a yid, like a real yid, come out, like live, you can see one, right? And he's basically everywhere and at all times. And like the entire Seder is like, is, 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 is conducted by him, right? Tzaddik yisod olam, he's the foundation of the entire world. So it's inside of every single one of us. How do you get it out? Torah and mitzvahs. Right? That's, that's what a tzaddik is. He's 24-7 Torah mitzvahs. So I would imagine there's a compounding element to that as well. It's not just like he's, he's, he's being a good boy. When you're 24-7 Torah mitzvahs, then your ma is just out. Mm. You know, it's out now. It's, it's a hundred brachas. Like it's in a state of revelation. That means the essence in the state of revelation. That means all the giluim are there. You could change the state of Rishtoshas. You could tap into this. You could tap into who knows what's going on at that point. It's already... We have no understanding of what is going on with a tzaddik. Because it's like trying to figure out what's going on with the essence of Hashem. Which the Rebbe says as much. When he talks about you know, his father-in-law, he basically says, Atzmusu muhusu b'slavish b'guv gashmi. And it was the words that freaked out the whole world. But he said it. Right? Which basically means the essence of Hashem. Right there. Sitting right there. That's what you're looking at. Just we all have it. Just <laughs> we all have it. Which would freak them out even more. Right? Maybe it's a more Korach-like, so it would be okay. Kulam Kadoshi. But yeah, that's the Indian. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go on then. Where do you go from there? Yeah. So, <laughs> that's right. I guess you can see from here where's the unbelievable, obviously, Israel element that's the, the pillar of the Hasidic movement you know it's like when you realize what a Yid is what is there left to do but go running around loving them and this is why it's drawn out from it and arousal from above in order to arouse from below at the period here and we want to add and we want to add now that this has taken place, that the light agrees to come out to arouse an arousal from below, to bring out the ma, misvasef iloi be it, it, the, 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 the arousal from above, i.e. the infinite light, it gets a, an aliyah, which is what we've sort of been saying. There's, a, there's, a, there's an Eloi in the arousal itself. In other words, there's more of an arousal. And there's an Eloi, there's an Eliyah in the place from, which, from where this arousal comes from, i.e. the Orient So It was so, all of a sudden, suddenly, when it realized its purpose is to go and bring the essence out of the Yid, it gets an Eliyah from that. Because it's, all of a sudden, it knows its reason for being. Right? It has, it has, that's called a, an addition that it didn't have before. Before it thought it was just like sort of sitting there. It didn't know how it got there, what it was doing there. When it realizes its purpose, it had like what happens to a pers- person when you realize your purpose. All of a sudden, you're like extra driven. You're 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 more than you were before. You realize what you're doing there. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, it's increased and amplified. Not only the arousal that we get is increased and amplified. Notice we get more um, light shine showing to us, and like more interest on the part of the universe to 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 open us up. But also, it's more powerful intrinsically. In other words, it does more of a job because it's, it itself gets an aliyah. It's more of a powerful um, it, jolt that goes into it. I don't know what the words would be there. Key, 
Al yidei zem is galibo odioser kavanashabo. Because it's one thing for it to realize that it's there for us. It's another thing to actually then shine to us. That's like fulfilling its destiny, not just knowing its destiny. And therefore, through this, it's aroused in it, it's, it's revealed in it, excuse me, even more what its kavana is, right? It realizes, mir gashbo, it feels, oh, I'm here for the yid. And then when it actually goes and shines to the yid, even more so, it fulfills its kavana. And therefore, there's an even greater, ed, like, aliyah that it has when it's actually shining to us. So what are we seeing from here? That the Orin Sof is benefiting from shining to us. It gets something out of it. In other words, when the Torah was given to the world, it wasn't just for the Yidden, it was for the Torah received something from that. Mm-hmm. Because the, it, it, the whole reason for it was to, was to, was to uh, uh, enable the essence of a Yid to come out when it fulfills its purpose, it's basically revealing the essence even more so. So that's an aliyah for it. And this is a similar thing as what we just said, that this is also, an exa- you know, as it comes to realize its purpose, that it is merely an example of this Indian in the Jew, of a Soviv or a, or a, or a, or a Mamali in the Jew, whose, es- whose source comes from the essence. It, it, it further realizes that, that that's the whole purpose of it, is to reveal what the Jew is, to bring the essence out of the Jew. Everyone good here? Mm. All right. Yeah. Go for it. You got a question? Uh, so, Jews and Goyim, uh, Jews, uh, one of our jobs is to uh, be a shaliyah to the Goyim in the same way that we're talking here, to reveal uh, God's essence. Our job is to bring something higher than the worlds and fuse it inside of the worlds, right? So the non-Jews, all the stars and the heavens, the creation at large, even the Seder Ishtoshalus is all part of the world, right? Even spiritual things, very spiritual things, right, are also still part of the world. To bring something which is completely beyond the world and fuse that with the world that's our job. So that's why we're a shliach, so to speak, to, to engage with the rest of creation, including the non-Jews, and do that to them, right? In other words, how do we do that? We basically cover the entire world with Torah mitzvahs. No one else besides us has the ability to actually do that. They have to participate. In other words, they have to keep the seven mitzvahs of B'nai Noach. And if they don't, they're not allowing the power of the Jew to reside inside of the world. So there's definitely a, a part of them which needs to accept Right? And it's a part of us that needs to try to convince. But ultimately, it's, it's, they're, they're the recipient of this because the only ones who can do it is the one who holds the essence and it can reveal the essence. Right? So we have, to, we have to bring this. This is what we're here for. We have to bring this out of the creation. And, and how do we do it? Basically, because if you look, everything having to do with Torah mitzvahs is designed to take a piece of the creation and use it for the sake of of accessing this light, including all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of laws that that guide our conduct with non-Jews. When we go into a, into a proper conduct with them, al pitora, they are all of a sudden what's called the chefza of the mitzvah. They become like a like a lulav or, or an esrog. They become the object with which we do the mitzvah with, and we we're part of that object. They're part of that object, and suddenly they're involved in this like divine dance, just like anything in the world is utilized with a mitzvah. The mitzvahs can't be done without the world. Right? You take the world and you do a mitzvah with it. So in this way, every, everything gets permeated with this light. Tess. V'zehu... Okay, now we're wrapping it up here. V'zehu va'ata Yisrael ma. This was going back to the original mimer. What is Hashem asking from you? We say, Ma, al tikra ma elameya. Right? We jump to this idea. Don't read Ma, read it Meya, which means a hundred Hashem is asking from you, a hundred blessings. Alright, so first of all, 
We're getting to this Indian of Ksiv and Kri. What does it mean? There's certain words in the Torah that are written in one way and they're read another way, according to our tradition. And this is one of them, right? Don't read Ma, rather read Meya. So what's that? It comes from tradition that you can just do that to certain words. So in other words, it's written in a certain way and it's read in another way. So the fact that the, right, the written word is Ma and the spoken word is Meya is significant which one is written and which one how it's spoken. Why? Because when it comes to written and spoken, that is indicating to you concealed and revealed. Right? The way it's written is basically concealed because it's not showing you what it really means. It's like a code. And when you say it, you break the code. You crack the code. So the, the ma is the concealed dimension of this word, the way it's written. And the maya is the revealed, the way it's spoken, the way you sort of flush it out. Just like, for example, if you have, if you, if you have an aleph, just push it an aleph on the page, right? Just one letter aleph. That's the tree. That's how you write it. How do you say it? Aleph. It's three letters, right? Which is aleph, lam, and pe. Where, 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 where do you see Aleph, Lamed, Pei when you look at Aleph on the page? It's not there. Because it's the, it's the Kri, right? It's the way you read it. You bring out certain secrets that it has and you reveal them, which is inside of the simple written form. Okay? So here you have Ma and Meya. You have Ma is the concealed, Meya is the revealed. And why is that? Ki Meya hu sovev. or de giloya etzim giloy. Because the Indian of Maya represents, as we've been saying, the Sovev light, which in its root is, is a light which is there to shine up the Atzmus. In other words, it's the Giloya Etzim. But the Indian of Maya represented the whole idea of the arousal from above, which is essentially the Orient Sov. Let's say it was, at this point, he's not making distinction between the, the Esrosphere's like Genuzos versus the other one. It's just that's all that is the Orient Sov, because remember, they're, they're Genuzos, they're, they're not really there. So in a, in, a, in a general principle, all the Indian of Meya is the Orient Sof that's above the world's of Sovik. And there, that, the Indian of it is Giloy. What is the Meya? It's there to shine and show something. And therefore, it's part of the way you say the word. The Meya is how you say it, whose Indian is Giloy, not concealment. Mm-hmm. Ma'ahu And what is the Ma? The way it's said, excuse me, the way it's written and not said. It's the ma of the neshama, i.e., the essence of the neshama. Shubahelam. And of course, when a person's created, put in a created body, the essence of your neshama, this crazy thing that we're talking about, it contains like all of existence, it's obviously concealed inside of you. And therefore the ma is written, is written as opposed to said, because it's the, it represents what's concealed. The al yidesha neshama nises nivra, because when the neshama becomes a created being, i.e. our present position, then your essence of your soul is no longer seen anymore. You, all you are is this big presentation of a body and ideas and of eyes and a mouth, etc. You're no longer, the essence of your soul is completely hidden. In order for it to come to revelation, and as we've been saying this whole time, in order to bring out the ma of your soul, you need to draw out the revelation part it comes from an arousal from above, which is called Meya, either Torah or hundred blessings on the mitzvahs. Is everyone with me? Totally. Before we cap it. Now here's the thing. This helam of the Ma inside of your soul, this is a helam, a concealment, which is below revelation. If you go back up to the essence, the essence is called concealment, which is above revelation. Right? In other words, preceding revelation is the essence of Hashem. Right. But by the time it comes down here, the Ma that it's trying to draw out of us is below revelation. It's like hiding. It's covered over inside of body and bones and so forth. So the Helam that we're talking about here is below revelation. The Alpia Yedua. But according to what is known, this is like another Klal, Shaksiv Hulamayla Mikri, oh, so we're now saying that the, what's written is higher than what's said. When it comes to the Ksiv and the Kri, which we just said before, they represent concealment and revelation. But there's another principle that what's written is higher than what's said. It's like the written Torah versus the oral Torah. In other words, it's, this is the Word of God. You know, how we explain it is, is also the Word of God, but it's already a, a step down in a, certain, in a certain way of thinking about it. So in other words, that we have a problem here. 
Because you have the, we just got through saying the ma is what's concealed, and yet, and yet, nevertheless, it's lower than revelation, and yet the ma at the same time is what's written, and what's written is always higher than the way it's said. So it's a little bit of a, con- con- we, have a we have a conflict right there. Did you, did you get that conflict? Should I say it one more time? In other words, what we're saying is that ma, in, which is in your body, the essence of the soul, is, is lower than revelation. Right? It's, it's a concealment which is needing to, something to go help it. As opposed to the essence of the soul, it's not lower than revelation, it's the product of, re- the pr- revelation is the product of it. It's the source of revelation. In the ma of our soul, it's not. It's like, it's like crying out, like I'm trapped down here, can you get me out? It's calling to the revelations to get it out. It's lower than revelation, right? On the other hand, we have a principle that ma is written and maya is said, and whatever's written is higher than what's said. So what is it? Is it higher? Is the ma higher than the revelation, or is it lower than the revelation? According to what seems, it's lower than the revelation. But according to the principle, what's written is higher. What's, what's written down, as opposed to what's said, is higher than the revelation. You with me? Not exactly? One more time. One more time. First of all, let's look at it like this. There's, there's two states of concealment. One is higher than revelation and one is lower than revelation. Mm-hmm. You see that? Yeah. Okay. So then, we're saying that the one that's inside of our body is the one that's called lower than revelation. Right? Because it requires revelation to unearth it. Right? So, ma, that means ma is lower than maya. Okay. You see that? However, there's a principle at, 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 that we have. When it comes to how something's written and how something's said, the way it's written is always considered higher than the way it's said. And what's written is the word Ma Hashem Elokecha Shoel Mimach. And how we read it is Meya. Yeah. So that, that right there flies in the face of what we just said. Now it looks like the Ma is higher than the Meya. A second ago we just said the Ma is lower than the Meya. But it's dependent on the Meya to be high. Which means it's lower than the Meya. You know, it's requiring, it's a concealment, which is like someone in jail requiring him... To, to, someone to save him, someone who's saving him is obviously not in jail, he's higher. Okay, we're going to answer it, but that's, that's the concept. So he's saying, Yeshloma. We can say, how to get out of this conflict. You understand? Everyone understands what we're saying? Yeshloma, da helim, da ma. Betzel, you mind closing the door for real one second? Thing? Just to keep the, uh, keep the suspense going here. Yeshloma, da helim, da ma, da neshama. Right? That the concealment inside of the ma of the soul. Shemurumaz bezeh shema hu aksiv. Which is hinted to this concept that the ma is what's written. Right? And we already, we have another principle. What's written is concealed and what's, re, and what's said is revealed. So, okay, we have two principles there, just to not get confused. One principle is that what's written is concealed. And what's said is revealed. The other principle is what's written is higher mm-hmm. and what's said is lower. Mm-hmm. Alright, so this Indian that the Ma of the soul is hinted to the fact that the Ma is written. In other words, it's coming to tell us that the Ma, which is inside of the, of the soul, which is the written part, which is the concealed part, it's coming to tell us that that Ma really is the soul is the soul which is rooted in the essential concealedness of the essence. In other words, that the, the lower ma really comes from the higher ma. That's, that's basically what it's coming to say. In other words, this that we have a ma in our, of our neshama, and the ma is what's written, and what's written is concealed and higher. It's coming to tell us that with the ma in our neshama, really its root is the higher ma, the, the inner, the concealment, with that is, which is beyond the orange soap. The is in between. Right. In other words, so on one hand it's lower, because it requires the orange soap to unearth it, but the fact that it's called ma, is coming to hint to us that it's the kri. What is the, well, I'm sorry, it's the, yeah, it's the uh, ksiv. It's what's written. And what's written is A, concealed, and B, higher. So to the ma in our neshama, it's, it's really higher and concealed. It's not the lower concealed part, it's the higher concealed part. Inside of us, it's coming to hint to us that we have the essence inside of ourselves. And this that maya 
is the way you say out the written ma. It's because by drawing out the meya to arouse the ma, nirgashbo shudugmas vegilu de ma hamad Yisrael. It becomes felt in it that it is an example of a revelation of the ma in the Jewish person. In other words, this that you have the ma which is written and the meya which comes to reveal it, right? And the ma really is the is the soul inside of us, the Maya which is coming to reveal it. But on the other hand, since we just got through saying that the Ma in us, really its source is much, much higher, then the Maya which comes to reveal it, therefore, gets an addition, gets an aliyah from the fact it's coming to raise us up. Because in doing so, it's actually, it's actually realizing the whole purpose of it is that it's just a reflection of what's inside of the essence. And therefore, even though it's above us, the second it comes to arouse us, it realizes that it's really below us and has a, a, a revelation from it. That's what it means. It's the, it's the revelation of the Ma. It's not just the revelation of the Ma up there. It's the revelation of the Ma inside of us. It suddenly comes to like save us and it comes down and realizes that we're the source of its existence. What do you need a hero for if the damsel in distress is not in the picture, right? It's, it realizes the hero is coming to save the day is really just in the book. It's only a character because... It's coming to reveal what the essential ma inside of us is. I told you this was a complicated mimer, but let's just finish it up here. The al derek zehu gambi yisrael atzmam, and the same is true when it comes to just a yid looking at himself. The ali deish and the shama meiras aguf, that by the soul coming to lighten up the body, bring light to the body, bring, uh, enliven the body. And this is it's going into some concepts like in the last line here, which are kind of complicated, but there's this concept in Tanya where it says, This that Hashem chose the Yidin. It's not that He chose our souls. Because we have a choice between two things, there has to be an equal choice, pretty much. And to choose the soul of an infinite being versus the soul of a created being, there's no choice in that. So when it says Hashem chose us, it means He chose our bodies as opposed to other potential human bodies, to put this infinite soul in. So the real choice of the essence of Hashem is on the body of a Jew, not on the soul of a Jew. And the choice of an entity is its highest possible fact faculty. The free choice of a human being is their very I that has to make that choice, right? In other words, the deepest part of yourself, the essential part of yourself, is the only part that's able to make choices. right? Once you make a choice, your, your intellect is going to succumb to that choice. Your emotions are going to succumb to that choice. Your thoughts, speech, and actions are going to succumb to that choice. The choice is the driving force which your whole your organism responds to. But the choice is essence, right? The choice is yours to make. You can make the whole thing go anyway based on your choice. So we see that Hashem chose our bodies. It means inside of our body resides this essential choice of Hashem. It means there's something about our body which captures the essence of Hashem more than the soul. And so when you look at yourself, I said these are very complicated things. It's like wrapping up the mimer with this, but it's, you could have a whole mimer just on this. So he says this Indian that there's the Bechiras Ha'atzmus, the choice of the essence is inside of our bodies. Actually, in Yisvasev Ilui Ba Neshama, it turns out that the soul itself, who's here to direct the body and tell the body what to do, etc. and so forth, really, there's a higher level of divinity inside of the body that there is inside of the soul. And therefore, that being said, the soul that can actually nourish and get an aliyah from the body, even when it comes down here ostensibly to help the body, who's the hero? The soul is the hero. Who's the damsel in distress? The body. But ultimately what happens is the soul realizes that the whole purpose of its existence is to come help this, this, this damsel. And therefore it realizes that there is no need for a soul if you didn't have a body. And therefore, I realize the body comes from a higher place, the essence, and therefore the body elevates the soul to a place that could not be without a body. Wow. And this is the same exact wow. little story that we just said the whole mimer is about. Just like we say in the future, the soul will nourish from the body, as opposed to now the body is nourishing from the soul. In the future, the source of the body will become revealed, and it will be revealed that it's higher than the soul, and the soul itself will gain its energy from the body, just like the orient soul gains its energy from the essence, so too it'll, it'll be the other way around. The orient soul, all the light, the soul will gain its energy from the essence which is found in our bodies. 
That essence is not, is that, that's the That's the ma of the Jewish soul. It's already there right now. It's already there right now. It's just that by most of us, it's in a state of total concealment. And we require like the hero, which is the Torah mitzvah, to get it out. When it'll get out, it'll realize, the hero is going to realize that its whole purpose of his existence is for this body that it was trying to help, where the essence resides. You say, get it out, it's not to un- the soul, to the body, right? Yeah, to unleash it from the body. To unconceal it. May it be Hashem's will that very soon will be fulfilled the statement that the, those who lie in the dust will rise up and sing. This is a mimer from the Rebbe's father's yurt site. So he says, that my, my father amongst them. And all of us will go quickly upright to our land. With the coming of Mashiach in this time, Mamish. Yeah. It's right. like the, I understand the soul, the power, you know, the, 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 the powerhouse of the, the individual. But what is it in the body? The body is composed of pus, urine, stool, water. So I don't understand. I can understand in, in the future it's going to nourish. But what's in it now? Where? Because our body is like it's kind of like everything, dirty dirt. Everything like that comes from a, is, is generated from a certain like it's, it's level of divinity. Like for example, clippa comes from. Like a like a like an unkosher entity comes okay. from the realm of the spiritual realm of Gimel Klippas Had okay. a, a, a kosher entity comes from the realm of of uh, Klippas Noga. Okay. Let's say a Sefer Torah comes from the realm of Kedusha. Right. right? All, all things that exist are derived from a different area of divi- of divinity. Okay. So as it comes out, the goof, all this, the physical physical el- element. It's derived from none other than the essence of Hashem. That's where it gets its life force from. None of the spiritual domains that are below the essence could ever bring this about. They're not capable of bringing okay. Gashmias about. The only one that's able to bring Gashmias about is He Himself. Right. So therefore, in, in, in reality, there's something going on inside of this, all those things that you mentioned, the, 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 right. the bones and the, and the flesh, yeah. which has a higher source. Okay. Then all, then even the soul, which is a spiritual dimension. Yes, Only thing is what at this point you don't see that it's considered. Right. It looks like it's receiving its life force because it's at the bottom. But that's because it that just that's because it's essence-like, and just like the essence is completely beyond comprehension, no one can see it. So too, the product of the essence is completely essence-like, and no one can see it. It would appear it would be impossible to see until Mashi- until Mashi- our body changes in Mashiach days because okay. we're okay. so engrossed. Okay. Is that or, right? Or through total refinement of Torah mitzvahs. In other words, Sadiqim okay. have this because they they have refined bodies, okay. even if they're not. So in other words, there's something you can do about it. I mean, it's not, right. uh, it's not like you just have to sit here and wait. Right. Okay.